And, and now, now the seasonal messages with Pastor Frank Frimpon Abwaji, the founder and general overseer of the House of Prayer Outreach Ministry International and a servant to the Open Door Mission Church, Germany. Now, the word. word. Pray, Lord my God, for a seasoned word, a word that, Lord, you have given us, a word that you would never, ever stop using to bless us. We thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, what I'm going to talk about by God's grace is um, it's called the mark and the city gate. The mark and the city gate. Uh, what do we mean by the mark and the city gate? Now the mark, the mark is um, a mark that is on your life. A mark, a mark, a stamp. Any any mark, like anything. Some people have tribal marks. Some people have. Uh, marks that they get. Some children have marks from their teachers at the back of their hands. One thing my children know that I don't like these marks that feels like a tattoo. So whenever they come, they say, Daddy, do you think this is all right? Just before they, just before they get into trouble. And um, we realize that um, day in and day out, we come across certain marks in our lives. But there was a guy in the Bible that had to be in an encounter with a particular mark. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Um, and looking at the time span, I just want to make this very, very snappy. Uh, so we cut a lot of analysis and um, digressions. But Genesis chapter 4. From 7 to 17, I will read just for want of time. Is, is, can you give me a little bit of volume? Thank you. Ah, hallelujah. Yeah, I feel it's good now. Yeah. So, um, really, really important here. Genesis chapter 4, verse, um, from verse 7, says, God is speaking now to Cain. Now, he starts from verse 6. Um, he says that why are you angry and why is your countenance falling and and what this question leads us to ask the question what could have been happening what is the preamble what could have happened before this statement was made and the story is very clear Cain and Abel are brothers first first guys of the land I mean they are the first guys of the land I mean they are the first they are the princes of the land. They, they, I mean, they are the accolades of history. The first sons, the first princes that were able, they were the first to be born on this earth. Cain was first, Abel was second. They were the first people to be born on this earth. They tasted womb experience. The first two guys to taste womb experience in our whole world was Cain and Abel. And then everything was going good, everything was going fine until they came to church. And this is the point that sometimes people are going to ask the question, why is it that I came to the Lord, I brought myself teacher they invited me and and i i i came and i wanted some answers but i'm not getting the answers instead i'm getting a problem i'm going to tell you them that is not the point that is not the truth that could be something that could be happening but the end of the story is that there will be a solution to the problem whatever you brought before god will bring an answer hallelujah and like Sanjay was saying that he was making friends with God, but he didn't know that God was already a friend. And that's the point. And, and all the testimonies we've heard today seems to have that big question mark. A question mark as tall and long that sometimes you don't even see where the end or the dot is happening. It's just like, really, this question mark is like sucking your energy that you don't even understand what's going on. But this is actually what's happening in these two guys. They have a, an issue 
at the end of the day Ken is in a problem Ken feels that there are so much questions to be answered why is it that the things I'm doing are not yielding fruits why is it that the things that I'm bringing not bringing the right responses what is going on right now what is happening so his countenance is going down he is not happy so the Lord ministers to Cain and say Cain there is a problem there is a problem that we need to address the problem is the problem of sin the problem of sin as we read in um, Romans chapter 6 there is a whole issue of sin encounter and sin encounter is that sin has a desire sin has a desire sin is this kind of troubling thing that comes to you it, it is even sometimes funny because you realize I've not done anything wrong but there is some seed of disappointment trying to come in there is a seed of of, of, of despair trying to come in there is something going on that is not taking that is not lifting my joy up and these are some of the things that the Bible talks about so you may think about sin as something I have committed but sin is something could be something that I have omitted or sin could be something that I have invited and so the Lord is bringing Cain to that level and saying that sin is at your door so verse 7 says if you do well you will be accepted but if you don't do well sin lies at the door and the desire of sin is to have you what is this sin that God is talking about Cain is having some information from the Lord about something that could be a problem for the future Cain is being told by the Lord that there is an issue that we need to address for the future there is a faith level that we need to achieve for the future there is an issue that we need to address for the future so when God is speaking to Cain God is trying to tell Cain that something must be done something has to be done a solution must be arrived and Cain did not understand there are times when we have tried to solve problems only for it to escalate and here Cain did not obviously understand what God is saying but God was trying to tell Cain that your brother could be losing his life at your hands and that was what Cain couldn't understand and today the Lord is telling us something that according to Romans chapter 6 we realize that there is a big big war going on the war of sin and death the war of the re the reason why Jesus came into this earth this reason is being very 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 much um, established in the fact that God is speaking to us what is he telling us he's telling us that there is there is a savior there is someone who wants to come closer to our lives and all these questions we have all these issues we may think that our biggest problem is our visa but God is looking at us as stepping into a position in history that we can be a door or an encouragement to somebody else you know the the, the testimonies that we're giving today seems to tell each and every one of us that we are in the same boat I, I don't know but if it is not you it could have been your parent but all of us one way or the other relate to these three testimonies one way or the other I mean I, I could see myself at the lion's den in the um, home office where the guy was flipping through the passport if he saw that I had come to Germany and gotten uh, a resident permit, my children, they had to get their UK resident permit inside the, their passports before I could take those passports to the German embassy for them to give my children their resident permits for Germany. If they see me as having already attained a resident permit in Germany it means my 
resident permit in UK is now and void. That means they cannot process my children's resident permits. For them to have the, the permission to get a German resident permit. It was like catch-22 situation. And this guy was flipping through my passport. He says, I have to look through the passport to see everything. And he was getting closer to the resident permit position, the German resident permit. Getting closer. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, God. One page. So, okay, I have to do another step. God, I was in this situation at just at this point. Everything would just fall, and that would be over. I could even see myself without my children. This was how difficult it was. But this is the point that we all find ourselves in this defining moment. But it's not. The visa is not the point. The point is that God has positioned us in this place. There was a time when a guy called Saul, who was to become king, he lost his donkeys. But the point is that it was not the donkeys. It was because there was a higher call. Why you are here is not the visa. Is because there is a higher call. There is a position that God has opened for you. Because you are supposed to be a signpost or an open door for someone else. That they will see the courage that God has given you. They will see the answered prayer. They will understand the testimony. And when they see the testimony, their encouragement will go on high. And one day, they will also be. The Bible says... The devil wanted to push you down and crush you. But I have prayed for you. When you are lifted up, strengthen the other people. Hallelujah. Everyone here, you give a mighty cup of to the Lord. Hallelujah. See, so this is the position that Cain found himself. I mean, I know everyone has a very bad mentality about Cain. But today I'm going to be a lawyer for Cain. I'm going to be a defense attorney for Cain. And I want us, I want you to ride with me in this journey. But I see Cain sitting right here. Cain is sitting right here. And he is in an issue. He has just committed the biggest atrocity of life. Cain has killed his brother. How many of us find ourselves in that. Maybe we are very righteous. I didn't kill anybody. No, I didn't. But there are times in our lives when we doubted that God was going to do a miracle for us. There are times in our lives that fear held us so strong that we couldn't turn left or right. There are times in our lives that we have given up that the things that we could have done, the simplicity of things that could have been done was not done because we didn't see it the way God saw it. And these are the times that we have ended up destroying the next step. You see, that's the point that God is speaking to us that we buy a teeny weeny faithlessness, teeny weeny, very little lack of faith would have destroyed another step and Cain found himself in that situation this time round Cain because of faithlessness because of rejection you see there are times in our lives that we have felt rejected I mean Julian was telling about the things that he had to go through you know the times that we have to cry because you thought everything had come to an end. See that stage of the drama that you thought, oh, this is how ah, it's going to be like this. And suddenly the curtains close. The curtains have closed so many times. And we don't understand what's going on. What's going to happen? What's the next step? What's the next stage? 
the beatings of the heart. I remember, I, I remember I, was, I had to go to the home office and I called my, some guys, I mean my, my prayer assistants. I said, I'm going into the lion's den. I know it's either I come alive or I, 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 they push my body out dead. Because it has to be yes or no. There is no middle zone. <laughs> and that's the point. The rejection, the despair, the disappointment, the almost dead, but never there. The things that could happen, everything. I mean, imagine you knew that you would get something and they'll be given a paper. I know many people that have been given this paper. The Bishani gone. You have a few days, your passport. Your pa you know how many people have come and said my passport is at the Osanaba Hoyde? And this is the biggest difficulty one could find themselves. And Cain found himself in that situation. And Cain had a conversation with God. And God said to Cain, look, you are not supposed to move to the next level. It's over. It's over for you, Cain. Because there is something speaking against you. There is an accusation being spoken against you. You have been accused. You have been accused every single time. There is a blood fighting against you. You can't make it. This blood is producing accusations every single day. You don't even know the language. You can't even... I mean, you, you see salt and sugar in the shop and you end up taking sugar because you, I mean, because you don't know what it is. You take salt for sugar, you take sugar for salt. I mean, you don't even know how to express yourself. What chance do you have here in this country? No, it's not possible. There is no way. You, I mean, you, you're struggling even to speak one sentence and you want to talk about B2. Even A1 is not <laughs> talked about. You see, the accusations come every single time. The limitations come every single time. And Cain saw his own demise from the word of the Lord. Let's, let's go to um, verse 11 of Genesis chapter 4. This is the Lord speaking. The Lord says, so now you are cursed from this earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Now the Lord himself, I thought we had a loving God. I thought what the pastors preach about is the God of love. But this God is producing a curse on a poor soul. How's that? No, no. My God will never descend from his position of love. He knows <coughs> sin. He abhors sin, but has the best medicine for sin. Hallelujah. That's who our God is. And as he interacts with Cain, we see the God that moves from the judge. See, I, I heard the story, and it's a beautiful story. A judge produces a judgment on a guy, takes this guy to jail. And do you know who drives the guy to jail? The judge. The judge takes the guy to jail and then hugs him and says goodbye to him. And it was like, he wants to be part of him in the jail. The sentence has been given, and yet the one that is giving the sentence is so much in love with this guy. There was another judge who gave an, a, an announcement. It was, you're supposed to pay a thousand euro. That's your judgment. And just as the guy was fumbling in the sky, he reaches his hand in his pocket. Take this pay out of this court. Get out of here before I change my mind. The guy is free. This 
is the type of God I have. This is the God we serve. This God is the one that produces the judgment. He's the judge and yet the lover. He's a judge and a lover. He judges me, but he loves me. <laughs> Job said something. He said, though you slay me, yet will I hold you. Because I know, like that little boy, his mother is holding him. And he runs and hugs the mother. Oh God. The type of God we have is that God that knows the end of the line but says, I will go with you all the way. And so Cain hears this judgment and says, My punishment, verse 13. And this is big. This is the best place that we ever get to with our relationship in God. He says, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me from this face of this earth and I'll be hidden from your face and I'll be a, a, a fugitive and a vagabond and anyone that sees me can kill me. That's what Cain is saying. So Cain has been placed to a sentence. The sentence is that Cain is wanted dead or alive. Cain has no protection in this earth. And this is the mark of the enemy. The mark, there are some people that are always attacked. They are always rejected. They are always refused. They know that they will never make it on their level. They know that they will never make a good choice. It's like choices has to be bad. It's like they get scared that the choice was good. Something must be wrong somewhere. How can I? I'm not supposed to make a good choice. I'm not supposed to make a good choice. It's not just going to happen. Because they know that that is the mark on their lives. There is a mark of negativity that the devil has tried to place on many people's lives. But, come with me. Verse 15. And the Lord said, Therefore, anyone that kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord, now I want you to mark this wherever you, whichever Bible you have. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. What is this mark? on Cain. What is this mark on Cain? There was a mark that the Lord placed on Cain. And this mark, I can tell you right now, I know what that mark is. I believe strongly this is a mark of blood. Hallelujah. It's the mark of blood. The Bible says someone was slain before the foundation of this earth. And this person has been qualified to be called my savior because he took upon my body became like a baby to be born on this earth to be the propitiation for everything i have ever done wrong his name is jesus he is the only one born of a woman qualified to save our lives the bible says that having suffered when I remember the word suffer, then I, I just remember he also had his question mark time. There were times that he opened his mouth. Bible said no, even no words came out. I'm sure he must have been saying three D Y frame or he must be he must be saying things that in his human nature. But he said one time he saw the cat. He saw the horror, the wormwood, the filth of all the sin that was in this world. He saw that. Oh God. He saw everything in the cup. And the Bible says, he said, Lord, this cup, let it pass over me. But then he remembered something. 
He said, if he were to take that step, none of us will be here. I, I'm, I'm number one. I know for sure I'll not be here. He saw me in that cup. He saw you and I in that cup. He saw our our despair situation he saw our hopelessness he saw our disappointment he saw the rejection he saw everything that we will ever go through in that cup and he said i'll drink it i'll drink it and that became the mark on my body the mark of the blood of jesus so when the lord set the mark on Cain, this mark became the mark of his life the bible says immediately the mark was set on Cain he built a city that's amazing because Cain is not supposed to prosper he has just committed murder let's go down memory lane he's a murderer But I remember somebody else. He was also in prison. His name is Peter. He's just in prison because somebody decided to be like a champion. His name is Herod. He gets two people. One is called James, the brother of Jesus. He kills James. Just cuts off his head. And when he cuts off his head, he, re he realizes that his political, the, uh, his poll numbers went high. His poll numbers went high. He realized that the, when they, they did the statistics of the polls for the next election, he was so high up there. He said, wow, I got good poll numbers because I killed the brother of Jesus for the fool. But he thought this was the next level. So what will he do? He will put Peter in prison and he's going to kill Peter the next day but the Bible makes me understand that Peter being bound in prison is visited by an angel and I'm telling you tonight whatever situation you find yourself the Lord is visiting you hallelujah and the Bible says Peter's chains dropped and somebody's chain is dropping because there are some things that you know you, even though we find, find ourselves in this situation, there are some blocks holding us. And Peter just finds himself following an angel. That sometimes in our lives that we are following, we are following something we don't even understand. We are coming to places we don't understand. You don't fully understand why you are even here. But I want to tell you something. The law says, though you don't understand, I understand. And I know you though you may not know me I have not only known you but I have given you a name the Lord says you may not fully know me or may not fully understand my precepts for your life but for me I've already set you up I've already opened a door for you I've already given you a new level I've already set you onto another level I've already demonstrated a miracle for your life I've already built some great events for your life and Peter finds himself following an angel. Now, Peter finds himself at a very important position. The same way Cain found himself. It's amazing. Cain is a murderer. Peter is a church leader. But at that situation, they found themselves in the same spot. That is telling us something. That we are all standing at the same level before God. It is our faith that will take us to the next level. Peter found himself in front of an iron gate. If this iron gate doesn't open, um, as chapter 12 verse 10, you can write that down and then you can read it. The Bible says Peter was in front of the iron gate which leads to the city. Cain found himself, after receiving the mark of the Lord, he found himself going to the next level of building a city Peter finds himself in front of an iron gate that leads to the city I want us to be on our feet right now 
We want to do something. Now there's a spirit that sometimes fights against us. It's called almost there but never there. And I'm here as a, as a soldier of the Lord to let us understand that one of the reasons why we come here is for us to understand who our God is and what he wants to do for our lives. And so today, I'm declaring a war against the spirit of almost there but never there. And I know all of you right here, the Lord is saying to me, every one of you understands what I'm talking about in your own way. There are times in your life you feel like I've gotten there. It's just in my hand. And then it never happens. It's a spirit called almost there but never there. But the Lord is saying to us today that I came to your life to get you there never again will almost there but never there attack our lives there are so many people whose hopes are building up right now you're building up in hope i declare and decree you will not rise up the next day to see that it was just a fantasy the spirit of almost there but never there where entry you can come to the you can come to the keyboards now uh, we want to just enter into a time of prayer the Bible makes us understand that Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, He says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I have come that you will have life. You will have life. You will have life. And have it to the full. What is happening here? Cain and Peter are at the same level. Peter is at that iron gate if that iron gate doesn't open do you know what is going to happen the soldiers in the prison will come and cut him into pieces king is at a place where he's wanted dead or alive if god doesn't set that mark on king any animal that sees king do you know how many animals are there in the bush the hyenas are there the foxes I mean, foxes don't even, can't even kill. But if a fox has rabies, it will bite. And when it bites, before Cain dies, he will also get rabies and behave like a fox. A wild fox. The wolves are there. The lions, the tigers. There are wild animals waiting to pounce on Cain. He knows he stands no chance in this big ocean of wilderness. In this jungle, he stands no chance. Look at you. Tell yourself what chance you stand in the next step if the Lord is not with us. We stand no chance. We have no chance. We have no chance. We have no chance. The mark of the Lord, the mark of the blood is right here. You're here, you, you want to really commit to this blood. You want to commit to this blood, the blood of Jesus. The Bible says this blood cleanses us. It takes us from everything. It gives us position. It gives us strength. It gives us the ability to stand against everything of the enemy. Jesus says, I have come that you will have life. I have come that you will have life. Can you just close your eyes if you don't mind? He says, I have come that you will have life. And you will have it to the full. Cain was a murderer. Peter was a church leader but at one stage in their lives they all found themselves one step to greatness 
one step to greatness the Bible said the iron gate opened of its own accord the iron gate in front of Peter opened it opened of its own accord the Bible says Cain received the mark from the Lord and he built a city the mark of the Lord made Cain build the city the iron gate opened to Peter and he went into the city there's a city of glory in front of you the Lord wants you to build a city the Lord wants you to build a city. You are not here. It's not because of the visas that you're here. Because the Lord knows that you have the ability to build a city. You have the ability. You are a city builder. I came to you with a message. Don't look down upon yourself. Do not Do look not down, down upon, upon yourself. yourself. Do not look down upon yourself because the Lord says you are bigger than you think. You are a city builder. You are a helper. You have to help somebody. Your word of testimony is a blessing to somebody. Even when somebody sees you coming to church, it is a hope line for them. I want you to lift up your hand to heaven. Everyone, please, just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you with one plea. I want a friend. I need a friend. I need a friend. You, I know to be the only friend I can have. And today, I invite you into my life into my life to be my Lord and my personal Savior and my friend help me because I can't do it on my own I want this mark this mark the mark to be on my body so that any employer sees me they know that I'm a different person any lecturer sees me they know that I come from a different place that I am a righteous person I want this mark this mark of power this mark of freedom this mark of deliverance I need this mark set your mark on me there is an iron gate in front of me and this iron gate must open it must open it must open I need a mark to open the gate it's the city gate the city you gave me this city has a lot of things in it it's a city of glory it's a city upon the hill Lord help me Lord hold me Lord be my portion in the name of Jesus I invite you I invite you into my life I invite you into my life lead me can you lower the sun right now You have a desire to give your life to the Lord in a, in a special way. You have a desire to rededicate your life to the Lord in a special way. Many, many things have been spoken to you already. This is just a confirmation and just a conclusion of everything that, that, that had already happened. I believe we, this is the fourth preaching that we've had because we had three beautiful testimonies. And this is just to summarize everything. And there's somebody here, really, you, you, you're beginning to love the Lord in a new way. 
and you're saying, I really want you, Jesus. There is something special here right now. The Lord's power is here. The Lord is healing many people here. He's healing many people here. But there's someone right here. You say, I want you more. For me, it's my heart. You're saying to the Lord, it's my heart. I want a new heart. I want a new heart, a new mind. I don't want you to raise your hand, but we're going to say the prayer again. And the Lord is saying to, to you, you will never walk alone. 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 All the question marks have been turned to answers. I want everyone to, to pray this prayer so that those who really want to pray this prayer don't feel like isolated. Say, Lord Jesus. I rededicate my life to you. Today, I'm asking you, thing I have done, any feeling of rejection, any feeling of disappointment, by thinking you were not fast enough for me, any iron gate that I felt was in front of me, Today I come to you. Forgive me wherever I've gone wrong. Hold my life. Enter my life. Be in my life. Be the center of my life. From today. You came that I will have life and have full life. And today I receive this life. The power of sin, the power of disappointment is broken ever in my life. According to Colossians 2.14 any handwriting that the devil has written against me today by the power of the mark of the blood you have removed that handwriting every accusation every court case whatever my family is going through back at home whichever family member is going through problems by my confession tonight as i stand for my family as i dedicate my life to the lord my family's problem is over in the name of jesus lord i want to love you Lord, I want to love you. I want to be with you from today forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you give a mighty clap of faith to the Lord?